Today uh, we have a guest and who is doing a plethora of things. He has given me a whole list here, y'all, of um, all the things he's got going on that he's working on, such as a YouTube channel, podcast, website, uh, a book. There's so many things to talk about with this guest today, and he is sitting here with me, and I'm very excited to have him. So good morning, Sean Oliver. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Good morning. Good, good to hear. So, Sean, I um, have heard a little bit of your story from Miss Latrice, but not too much. So, um, today on the show, we just want um, to basically give you the time to tell us what you've been working on, what kind of your story was, how you came up, things like that. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Well, simply put, after my release from serving over 27 years of incarceration, I came to Austin. And when I came to Austin, I came with the mindset that I had a desire to help people. Mm -hmm. And so what I found out quickly is that just making that statement, I want to help people, that opens up a wide range of different opportunities. And so the particular opportunities that I chose to settle in on is I opened up a business called Open Door Consulting, where basically I help people deal with the trauma of having involvement with the criminal justice system. And so simply put, after me serving time, I came to understand that not only the victims of crime, but the families of the perpetrators of the crime, as Mm -hmm. well as my peers, because at one time I had committed a crime for which I was found guilty of. And so the way that I moved to help those individuals is just giving them what I've learned to help me make better decisions. And so I was speaking to a gentleman earlier and he was like, almost everything you do has open doors in it. And I say, yes, because I believe that decisions like doors take you places. Mm -hmm. And so what I did is I formulated an online curriculum called Making Better Decisions, where it just gives you four steps, four principles that have been key to me not only being successful, but continuing to grow in opportunities to help people And those four principles. I use the acronym STOP. Okay. And simply put, I didn't know at the time mm-hmm. that a lot of people use STOP. And so when I when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, I'm not the only one who had the idea about the acronym. But uh-huh. the particular aspect of the acronym that I use is STAND, THINK, OPTIONS, PROCEED. A lot of times when we get ready to make decisions, we're not necessarily accurate in our perceptions. And I use myself as an example. When I was a young child being raised by a single mother, I looked at the difficulties that a lot of individuals around me were experiencing financially. So I made a momentary decision that, hey, I'm not going to sit around and wait on others to give me something. And rather than being patient and going the academic approach, I began to do little shortcuts and slick things to make money. Back in the day when they had newspapers, Mm -hmm. I had a newspapers route. And so I figured I went from basically 50 people that I brought newspapers to, to over 350. And then I realized that when I was doing the accounting, and remember now, I'm like in seventh grade, I said, some people pay monthly, some people pay yearly, some people pay two weeks. I said, all I'm responsible for is to pay the newspaper a certain amount of money every two weeks. And so what I began to do is be slick. Mm -hmm. As long as I pay them their money, the people who paid for a year paid for months in advance, I would keep that money for myself. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And I knew I could keep doing it Mm -hmm. until I decided I don't want to do the paper route anymore. And then it'll be their problem. Uh Well, it seemed to work as a child, but that momentary decision not to be patient, not to do the right thing morally eventually led me to doing other crimes and that eventually landed me in prison. And so when I use stop, whenever I make a decision, the first thing that I do is I perceive is what I'm seeing the right thing? Is it a selfish thing? Is it a God thing? The next thing that I do is I think, I think about my family. I think about my freedom. I think about my future. The next thing when I feel pressure, have you ever felt pressure to make a decision? Like you got to make this decision now. You got to make it. I don't look at it like that. When I feel that pressure that I have to make a decision, I immediately turn that around in my mind and I say, I have an opportunity to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And having done the S, the T and the O, now I proceed. And so that online course can be found at my website at www.opendoors2better. See the open doors to what? Better, better decisions, better relationships, a better life. Awesome. I didn't even think of that like um, 
that acronym that's not something that came to mind at all and so I think that's great that you've taken that and made curriculum out of it to help um you know because we definitely deal with um some sort of the same type of community of people uh you know working from Melj dealing with people who have been formerly incarcerated helping them and also their families but you've taken a different route of making a curriculum for them which I think is really really cool I didn't even think of that at all Really, really. Mm -hmm. And something else I discovered as I've been teaching the course, one thing, especially with the youth or college age individuals that I've Mm -hmm. been instructing, I'll tell them this. I said, we all have a level of accountability as an individual, Mm -hmm. but there are a lot of systems, whether that be the criminal justice system, whether that be the education system, whether that be the insurance system, that systems have been set up to where a lot of times the people who are trying to take advantage of the opportunities, they don't look like me. Mm -hmm. Simply put, if you look at statistics across the United States, basically any system, and I'll just use the three systems that that I spoke about, the criminal justice system, the insurance system, and the education system, minorities, or when I say minorities, I'll just say people who are not white, Mm -hmm. basically, they never seem to get the most benefit from the systems, but the system seemingly is set up for everybody. And if all things were equal, you wouldn't see so many different racial distinctions Mm -hmm. when it comes to finances, when it comes to education, and when it comes to opportunities. So I always say, listen, stop is good for you as an individual, but don't pressure yourself to think that it's all your fault. Mm -hmm. And then some people say, well, the system will never change. I say, that's a lie. And I'll use this as an example. I said, when I was a young man, I'm 51 right now. When I was a young man, firefighters, police officers, and lawyers, they were viewed in a good light, as well as ministers. In this day and time, a lot of times, police officers are not viewed in the light that they were 40 years. I'm just choosing that number, 40 years ago. So if that can change then why can't we change other things within a 40 year mm-hmm. increment? Mm-hmm. And so that's why I do focus on accountability and decision making from an individual standpoint, but I also let people know, realize that sometimes it's bigger than you. It's bigger than the institution. There's a systematic problem. And if we don't attack it as a systematic problem, we're going to continue to have the same results. Presidents come and go, governors come and go, police chiefs come and go, but it's the same problem. That shows you that it's systematic. So Mm -hmm. when we're making decisions or when we're choosing what we're going to invest our money in or what we're going to invest our time in, let us not just focus on this level. Let's begin to look at another level. And that's something that I bring out in making better decisions. Realize that the decision is bigger than you. Yeah, I I agree. There's a lot of things that are out of our hands necessarily, but there are things that we do have the um, opportunity to be able to take control of in some sort of aspect. Um, Good morning, caller. Oh, just kidding. So sorry. Um, But anywho, um, we, uh, I agree that a lot of things we cannot, um, uh, we don't have control of and the sense of coming together as a community. That's something that we can change mm-hmm. more than just an individual doing it. Um, call in number if you want to join this conversation is 512-836-2887. And um, I also wanted to talk about today uh, your book. That's something that I'm really interested in. Uh, personally, me, um, as some of our viewers know, I'm a, a public relations major, so that's something that really interests me is uh, book writing and just writing in general. So I just wanted to get a little feel about what you're doing uh, book-wise and how that's going for you. Okay, the book that I'll have published hopefully within the next two months and released is called A Servant's Tray. Okay. And the idea was when I was sitting down at night and I was studying my Bible, I began to just write down things because a lot of individuals that I had spoken to, they were like, man, the Bible, that's just old. That, that, that doesn't work in everyday life. And I was like, no, man, this Bible has guided me. It's uplifted me. It helps me in everyday life. So I began to write down some different principles and precepts that I got from the Bible. An example would be I titled one chapter, one man's trash is another man's treasure. 
And if you're not acquainted with the Bible, what it basically tells is there was a man named Samson and he was facing thousands of enemies. And he looked down in the desert and he saw the jawbone of an ass. He picked up the jawbone of an ass and he basically slaughtered the enemies, not only of he, not only of him, but of God. Mm -hmm. And so for it to be a jawbone, that means that some animal had to die in that particular location. Mm -hmm. It had to decay in that particular location. Mm -hmm. But then in the hands of a godly individual, it wrought a great deliverance and brought glory and protection and safety to God's people. Skip to 2022. What that means, there are a lot of people who have been in the same place in life, mm -hmm. whether that's in a relationship, whether that's in a job, whether that's in a mental illness. And I'm saying in the hands of a godly person or with the help of God, God can take those same circumstances, that same situation. And he can not only bring glory to himself, but he can help people round about. That's what the book does. It looks at Bible scriptures, tells the story, and then gives a 2022 application. And the way that I got that for myself, I asked God, I said, God, I went to Sunday school and I went to church when I was little. Why didn't it work? When I considered parties or when I considered doing wrong, that never came up. And it says you read it and you had an intellectual knowledge, mm -hmm. but you didn't have a revelation. And when you get a revelation, you can live somewhere. And a revelation simply means when I pull back the cover and uncover the wisdom that's truly there, you don't see a story. You see a principle. And that principle was not only good and worked back in ancient times. It works today. So that servant's tray, I know I'm nothing special. And I didn't mm -hmm. start off to write the book. But I know I just want to serve people that book. And I'm super excited about it. Like when you mentioned it, because it's always been in my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's been a journey. Mm -hmm. Because, you know... I just was released from incarceration in 2020. So learning how to write a book, learning about ISBN numbers and copyrights and dealing with Amazon and then learning I not only have to pay for an editor, I have to pay for a formatter, I have to pay for a book cover and all those things that I'm learning, mm -hmm. I share with my peers and I share with other people. That's what I do sometimes on Facebook or Instagram or even on my YouTube channel. Whatever I learn, I want to share. And this book is me sharing what I've learned from God's word that helps me in everyday life. Gotcha. So it's almost like a, um, you would say it as like a um, broken down of how you took the Bible, what it says, but applying it to things in today's society. Definitely. Awesome. That's really, really cool. Because that's what pe people want to be successful. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that these principles guarantee success, whether they're in business, whether they're in relationships, whether they're just living every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was looking at that the other day. You know, a lot of people are going to counseling and there's a lot of mental illness. And I'm saying that I even believe the Bible is good for counseling mm -hmm. because ultimately we all want peace. Mm -hmm. We want peace. The Bible is full of peace, but how do you apply it? Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to share with people. That's awesome. I think that's really cool. Um, like I told you, you know, books and writing is just something I'm really interested in. Um, so apl I applaud you. I definitely know writing a book is probably not easy whatsoever. So I applaud you. And you said you're coming. It's coming out in about two months. In about two months. Two months. That's really exciting. It's being formatted right now. Okay. And I just I'm learning these things, mm -hmm. but I'm super excited, and I look forward to sharing it with you and whosoever. But as I said, it'll be on the website. And any questions you may have about anything that I'm speaking about, it's all on my website. Awesome. All right, guys, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back to you. You're listening to Iron Sharpens Iron. So um, we uh, took a short little break. We were talking to our guest today, Sean Oliver, about things that he is working on. We just got done talking about his book um, that is coming out and he says about two months, hopefully. So that's super exciting. And um, another thing I wanted to touch on was the um, academy. That's something that you listed that you're doing. So can you explain to me a little bit about that? Is that to do with the curriculum? Excuse me, the curriculum that you're um, that you've created? Yes. Okay. The, the first product that I'm offering on the academy is an online course called Making Better Decisions, and that was the stop that I referred to earlier in the show. Mm -hmm. And so if they'll go to my website they can get to that curriculum and take it. It gives them seven days to take it. Once you purchase it, you have seven days to take it. I keep track 
with you while you're taking it because I want to encourage you. If you have any questions or you want to reach out to me while you're taking the curriculum, that opportunity is available. And so what I plan to do is continue to build curriculums to help. The next curriculum that I will make available in a few weeks is one to help families prepare for individuals who have justice involvement because there's a lot of different family members who reach out to me and they say, what can we do to help our relative gain their freedom? What can we do to help our relative keep their freedom? What can we do to prepare when our relative is free? That'll be the next product in that academy. Another part of that academy is I've offered to come and speak for different organizations or different events. And basically I speak on three different things. Those things are one, overcoming myself. I found that the greatest enemy to me <clears throat> is me. And so there are some principles and there are some things that I went through in life where I had to overcome what was going on inside of me. So I'm open to come and speak on that subject. I'm also open to come and actually do the stop course as a workshop. And a lot of times, especially in today's society, people want to do things quickly. And they say, well, how long does it take to do a workshop? I said, well, a proper workshop I can do in two hours time. And they said, oh, man, you're going to talk for two hours. And I says, no, what I'm going to do, I'm going to speak on each letter in that acronym stop. And there's only four letters, but I'll speak for about seven to eight minutes. But I put the different individuals into groups and I allow them to create scenarios where they have to utilize the principles in stop. And then the final thing that I'll discuss and that I'm offering to come speak or share on is basically when I was a young man, I was always looking to find worth. Mm -mm. And so that journey in my search for significance is something that I found that when I share with different individuals, they often can find their story in my story. And so finding significance, overcoming myself and actually teaching stop to help people make better decisions. These are all a part of the academy. That's why I went on ahead and revamped my website mm -hmm. to let, because people were asking, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? And as I said, I'm learning and I'm excited to learn and I've had different individuals come alongside of me to help me learn. But at the same time, what I'm learning, I wanna help other people learn. I don't wanna help you learn to help me. I wanna help you learn because you have a plan, you have a story, you have a purpose that I believe that I can help you find for yourself. It's good to be in relationship with people, but I also believe each individual is special enough and individual enough to have a purpose that they need to follow by themselves. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, so it looks like we have a caller. Good morning, caller, how are you doing? I totally agree with you. And to answer your question, in my book, I don't. In my life and in my curriculum, I do. And so my explanation to you is one of the things that I say in STOP is that I ask a question. And the question that I ask when I'm covering the think concept in STOP is, I said, I want you to think about the last time somebody did you wrong. I want you to come up with some scenario in your mind, a memory where you know beyond a shadow of a doubt someone did you wrong. And once they do that, I say, I want you to turn that around and I want you to say, how much of the blame do you take? How much responsibility do you take? And a lot of times at that point, they'll be like, no, 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 you don't understand. I said, listen, I let you pick the scenario that you most blame other people for, correct? And they'll say, yes. And I say, I want you to understand that even if it's just a half of a percent, if you cannot take responsibility that you had some part in that action, then you're not going to be able to think about that situation from a proper mindset. And going with them through that step by step has helped many individuals. But I want you to understand that if it is not presented in the proper manner, a person's perception does not allow them to hear what you're saying. What you're saying is proper. What you're stating is true. But if the perception of the individual is just that I am a victim who has been victimized until that is addressed, you're not going to be able to move them in a mindset that's going to cause them to take responsibility. So. Personally, I share that with individuals. A part of my curriculum, I share that with the individuals. But the book, that's not the purpose for the book. So I not only totally agree with you, but I would share with you that a key, um, I heard this statement and I want to get it right. 
You can't skin a fish until you catch it. And a person said, what do you mean by that? I said, you have a lot of people trying to clean fish that they have not caught. If you don't have my attention, if you don't have my respect, if I don't know that you care about me, then there's nothing you can tell me, no matter how true it is, that I'm going to receive for myself. So I just want to encourage you. I think that you're doing a great work. And obviously, you've run into a lot of different scenarios. But I would just say, listen to what they're saying acknowledge that they're saying it and you hear them and that will allow you to progress to share with them let me give you another component maybe that you have not thought about but i thank you for your call today thank you all right so looks like we're um coming up close to the end of the show so um what are some things that um obviously besides your book but what are some things that you would like um, our caller, uh, our viewers to be aware of, of things that um, maybe you can help them out with or um, things that you can offer. I'd love for anyone listening to visit my YouTube channel. It's called Open Doors to Better Relationships because the reason that I started that was because I believe that wisdom mm -hmm. is found all around us. I don't think I know it all. And so what I've done is I not only have Bible teachings, but I do a lot of interviews with individuals and the wisdom that these individuals are sharing concerning sometimes their profession, sometimes concerning systems, sometimes concerning their faith. I believe that these interviews are helpful. And so I would ask anyone visit the channel. The channel is not about me, but the channel is exposing you to other individuals that have you ever had a good conversation one-on-one -on -one with somebody and you mm -hmm. had a thought in the back of your mind, man, if other people could just hear this conversation, mm -hmm. that's all I seized upon. Okay. On my channel, all I seized upon is I seek to interview people, not special people, not spectacular people, but just individuals who they've said something that I think that if someone else was a part of this conversation by listening to it, they will be helped by it. So I would encourage people to visit that channel. I would encourage people. There is a radio station called the BPG Inspirational Station. I have a radio show that comes on on Monday mornings from 9 to 10 a.m. And basically what I do in that, I discuss relationships. Okay. And you say, well, well, what aspect of relationships? Work relationships, individual love relationships, all kind of relationships. And we look at the fact that I believe the bottom line in business, mm -hmm. I believe the home. Mm -hmm. And I believe our society would do better if we knew how to exercise understanding in relationships. And so that's what I devote that radio station to. I have a podcast with a friend of mine. Okay. He served over 24 years and we call that. You better say that. <laughs> well, that you know, that's how we that, that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. And we think that there are some things that we need to share with people from different perspective. Mm -hmm. He's a little bit more expressive than I okay. am. And so we like to attack subjects on that. And that podcast is called You Better Say That. That YouTube channel is called Open Doors to Better Relationships. That awesome. radio station was the BPG Inspirational Station. And my radio show is titled Open Doors. And be on the lookout for that book, Absolutely. A Servant's Tray, in the next two months. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I definitely think you're a person that goes uh, by the saying knowledge is power, which is something that I've always had to use in my life. So the more you know, the better you'll be off. And so um, we are coming to end, guys. Thank you, Sean Oliver, for being on today. It was a pleasure talking to you.